And just a little bit into the not maybe we could talk a little bit about the Ottoman Empire, but really talking about the heritage of the Ottoman Empire and uh, and and relating it to Islam in the Balkans. Uh, I know you're from you're from Greece. We'll talk about that in just a second. But Islam in the Balkans as as a heritage of of the Ottoman Empire. Um, as I mentioned before, Andalus was just one route how Islam entered Europe, and the first one actually, and the earliest one, seven eleven. Uh, south and southwestern Europe, uh, Spain, Portugal, up to Switzerland, Central Europe. The other side that was effect affected by the Muslims as well was actually the southeast, the nowadays Balkan Peninsula, up to Vienna, Austria. The capital of Austria is not part of the Balkan Peninsula. Hungary is not part of the Balkan Peninsula. Even Romania is not considered part of the Balkan Peninsula. But everything in the south of these countries, such as Bulgaria, the former Yugoslavia, so countries that have developed since that time, Slovenia, um, um, uh, Bosnia, uh, Kosovo, and Albania, for example, and Greece. These are all part of the Balkan Peninsula, with the difference that Greece in itself um, was uh, had a different history. The Balkan countries, Albania, uh, Yugoslavia, and Bulgaria, became part of the communist bloc okay, in the, during the time of the Cold War um, in the 20th century. And during that time, the Muslims in that part of the world um, were not allowed to really practice. I mean, in Albania, for example, um, the, the mosques and the synagogues and the churches were all closed. So you were not allowed to, uh, a priest from former priests and any imams and so on could not really practice. And many of them had forgotten even the Quran. No, they had forgotten everything. So now Albania, there's a rediscovery phase in Albania, for example, and in many other countries in, in the Balkan Peninsula. Whereas in Greece, we always had a Muslim minority in the north. And the northern part of Greece, Western Thrace, as it's called, had um, a big Muslim minority, about 150,000 people, who, of whom, again, they're divided into three or even four groups. Some are Turkish speakers, some are of the Pomaks, which is a Bulgarian a small group speaking Pomak, which is a Bulgarian dialect. Others are gypsies and so on and so on, or Sinti and Roma, as they call them nowadays. So these people um, remained from the Ottoman Empire, and the Ottoman Empire once ruled the whole Balkan Peninsula for around 600 years. So that's a very long time. Again, as we saw on the other side, having the Al-Andalus for seven to eight centuries, we have about five to six centuries um, in, 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 in the Balkan Peninsula. The Ottomans ruling, um, um, introducing Islam, introducing their cultural heritage and background to uh, the people living there. Bosnians, for example, were known having accepted Islam within no time. Within the first hundred years, actually, the Bosnian nation became uh, Muslim. Uh, the Albanians, it took them a bit longer. But again, you have the Albanian fighters for the Ottoman Empire. The Albanians never had a country. It was always Albania never existed. Albania exists since 1912. So before there was no Albania, it was Albanian people as Bosnian people, as Pomak people, as Greek people, and so on. So these people were very important warriors for the Ottoman Empire. So without the Albanians and the Pashas, who many of them were Albanians of Albanian origin, the Ottoman Empire could not have been um, um, run the way that it was running, actually. And uh, um, the, the Balkan Peninsula has a lot to talk about, especially because it's important for us, now, for us nowadays because of the last war that happened in Europe, in Yugoslavia, the breakup of Yugoslavia in the 1990s, and the uh, Bosnian War, um, and the um, development, actually, that nowadays we have six or seven countries that have come out of Yugoslavia, which was one country before one entity, and now is six or seven countries, out of whom basically three are Muslim countries, mainly majority Muslim countries. Uh, so, yeah, that's why the knowledge of the Ottoman Empire and with regards to uh, Islam and the Ottomans in the Balkan Peninsula is extremely important. Um, yeah, this gives you a brief. Great. Yeah, yeah, I had a friend from uh, Albania and uh, I was clueless as to how many, how much Muslims there are in Albania percentage wise. And uh, when I researched a little bit, it was, it was quite, quite shocking. Um, but yeah, and uh, it's uh, quite interesting there. Um Let's let's talk a little bit about about you. I'm interested in learning a little bit more about you and